What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, a new show that I've launched today called The Players' Lounge. And um, it's only right that I start off with two very special guests. Um, Super Kevin Campbell joining me again. I appreciate it, Kev. How are you? I'm very well, thanks, Curtis. Hope you, you hope you're well and the family. Yeah, oh, good. Thank you for joining me. And uh, a very special guest. This was a bit last minute, but um, former Arsenal defender, captain at one stage, Swiss captain, big Phil Senderos. How you doing, bro? Hi, everyone. Yeah, good. Thank you. I hope everyone is keeping well. Are you how, how, you been, how you been in this lockdown, Phil? Well, you know, keeping pretty busy with the kids at home and uh, and trying to uh, to work my brain a little bit, so <laughs> so I don't yeah. uh, I don't stay out of the game for too long, you know. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, so we'll talk Arsenal. Um, gonna start off talking a bit about your time there when uh, things were a little bit better than they are now. Um, obviously, you joined uh, 2003. You missed the unbeaten season through injury. Like, what was that like? My missing. The invincible season, being injured. Yeah, you know, I, I was part of the squad. I was training every day. Um, it wasn't. I wasn't injured the whole year, but um, I, I was injured uh, for a part. And um, and uh, you know, the jump from the Swiss league was a, a big jump. So uh, it gave me a bit of time to uh, to adapt and and to get up to speed. You know, get up to the level. And uh, and I think uh, that time, even though I I did like you say missed out on a, on winning a medal and and that unbeaten time, uh, probably gave me um, gave me the strength for for the rest of my career. Yeah, yeah, of course. And um, the FA Cup final 2005 against United. Um, I mean, what an amazing day that was, man. They they battered us that day. To be honest, I thought, but you know, Vieira with the last um, last kick of his career at Arsenal. What was that day like, man? It must have been amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. I mean, uh, walking out on the FA Cup final day, um, the, that feeling, you know, playing for Arsenal, it, it was uh, very, very special. And um, and and I remember seeing my parents in the stadium and and knowing that you know my family was there and 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 I was on the field and it, it just felt uh, amazing uh, winning that that FA Cup final. Yeah, like you said. Uh, during that game, we didn't we didn't uh, play the game that that we usually played. You know, we were defending a lot of the time. Uh, they had the, most of the chances, but uh, you know what? We we stuck at it, and and you know the importance is that we have this trophy now. And uh, you know, looking back, uh, no one looks at the at the game anymore. We just look at the the trophy cabinet. So. Curtis, <laughs> Curtis, Yo. what what you got to look at is, I I believe that was payback as a as an Arsenal man. You know yeah, when yeah. we got beat by them, Gig scored in the in the semi final oh. to beat us. That was yeah, payback. Yeah. So thank you, Philly. Thank you, the boys, <laughs> you. for getting us that win. <laughs> that, was a, that was a bad day when Giggsy scored that man. Keon should have fouled him though. Well, Dixon, Keon, everybody could have fouled everybody. him, but you know <laughs> that's the way it goes sometimes. You think yeah. he's not going to get through, and then all of a sudden, you know, he goes through and he he, he hurts us. So. You know, well done, Phil, and the boys for getting us that that that, that FA Cup win. Thank yeah, you. No, it was an amazing time, and uh, I remember that team. Uh, you know, and we had a very very good characters in the team, and and people that could win you games, and and people stuck at it. You know, that's what you remember from this type of days. You know, uh, no one gave up, no one gave in. Um, when we all stayed together, and in the end, you know, the the one who believed it until the end is, is the one who won. You know, yeah. that's what I what I think. Well, Arsenal had the never say die attitude. So, yeah, you know, no matter how bad we're on the ropes, we always could knock you out. So that's good. Yeah, and always yeah, come exactly. back. Kev, you know, I want to touch you as well. I never realised you made you made over two hundred appearances for Arsenal. Yeah. I mean, you was there for a long time. Um, you you was involved in the Cup Winners Cup, right? Yep, played. Yeah, and you and you and Wright, you had a good little partnership in that. You scored scored a few goals as well. Yep. Yeah, look, you know, look, I, I'm I'm one of the real lucky ones. I supported Arsenal as a kid. I got to put the shirt on in front of the North Bank, play, win trophies with Arsenal, and be a fan. So you oh. know, I, I've just, I've honestly, a lot of players talk about living the dream. I've lived the dream at Arsenal. I really yeah. have, and that's why that's being on with the likes of Philippe, 
you know, I've been there as a fan watching Philly as a fan mm. win. So, you know, I'm just so, I'm so lucky, honestly. Yeah. I'm so lucky to have, have played for Arsenal and support Arsenal. Yeah, you are, man. I mean, I mean, Phil, I wanted to ask you, I mean, do you feel like the fans maybe didn't give you the credit for, for how good you were at Arsenal? I mean, I thought you was a solid defender at Arsenal. I mean, I know Drogba gave you, you know, a few difficult games, but he gave everyone difficult games, man. I mean, do you, do you think you didn't get the credit you deserve? You know, it's never something that I look for. Um you know, a lot of people tell me about this time and, and, and tell me, yeah, you struggled, this and that. But, you know, like Kevin said, first of all, playing for Arsenal is, is the biggest pride of, of my life. Like, well, I dreamed of, of playing uh, on this biggest stage and, and working uh, with champions. So this was already, I was living the dream, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I was good enough to play at that level. And I know because I played it, uh, I played at that level and I continued playing uh, uh, at, at a very good level after Arsenal. It's never the same when you leave Arsenal, of course, but uh, uh, yeah. it's always, uh, you know, I continued my career. And, and the credit is never what I what was look, looking for. I wanted to win the games and, and make sure my team wins, you know. Uh, I would give anything. I, I would sacrifice my game, make sure I have a, a bad game as long as the team is winning. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't really care. So the credit, you know, um, it's like that. Champions League run when we go 10 games uh, uh, without conceding, you know, I don't see it as a personal uh, achievement. I see it as a team achievement and whatever credit people want to give me, well, you know, good good for it. As long as the, the team is winning, well, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. Uh, my relationship with the fans, I have to say, I, I always uh, meet a lot of Arsenal fans. I live in North London at the moment and and um, and they remind me of uh, of very good times, you know. They don't really uh, <laughs> abuse me or anything. <laughs> I think I came just before uh, uh, social media, which uh, I think uh, yeah, was, yeah. was probably good. But uh, you know, uh, good games, bad games. As long as I, I gave my all and uh, and I put my heart out on on the uh, on the field, I think people saw that uh, true fans, and that's what I, I come away with it. Curtis, can, yeah. I, can I just add something to that? Because yeah, go on, go on. obviously Philippe's played, I've played. I think what people yeah. have to realise, when other teams, opposition teams play Arsenal, you get their very best. Yeah, Trust me, you get their very best. There's no, oh, you know, we, we take time off. Everybody wants to impress against Arsenal. Everybody yeah, does. So that's why the Arsenal players have a lot more pressure on themselves because... You know, some of the other clubs are not Arsenal. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. When when you play for Arsenal, you have to be at it every single game because mm. the opposition are coming for you. Yeah, of definitely. And I think at that time, uh, even even more. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's not something to defend myself, but uh, I was 19 at the time. You know, <laughs> you don't You're see learning. many uh, many um, central central defenders at 19, 20. Uh, playing at the top of the game um, in the biggest league in the world uh, on the biggest stage, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's it's not an excuse. It's just that I, I was still learning and I continued mm -hmm. learning after this and uh, I needed to make mistakes because that's part of the of game. Uh, the the thing is that the mistakes uh, cost uh, a lot of the times um, a lot of things because uh, that's what happens at the biggest, at the top level, you know. Yeah. Do you know a game I wanted to ask you about was um, I saw you do an interview recently where you spoke about uh, Real Madrid away in the Bernabeu. Was it was it true you were sick at the side of the pitch or something? Yeah, you know before kickoff, uh, this was my my absolute dream. So my my dad is Spanish. I play I watched Real Madrid growing up. Uh, he's a Real Madrid fan. Um, I've watched Real Madrid all my life and I uh, went to the stadium. They used to come to next to Geneva on pre-season tour. So I used to go every single year, take pictures with the players. I was like, like Kevin with Arsenal, me, it was yeah. Real Madrid uh, when I was a, a kid. And then uh, I played against them at the Bernabeu for Arsenal. It was the ultimate dream. This is what I was dreaming as, as a kid, you know, to, to be in that type of game uh, on mm. that level. And um, yeah, I, I was overcome a little bit with the, with the emotion, the pressure. And before kickoff, uh, I started throwing up on the field. And then once the ref uh, blew the whistle, it was gone. Like the game started, you know, and 
I didn't think anymore of where I was. What I just had a moment before the game where I thought, whoa, this is, <laughs> I'm at this the Bernabeu here. <laughs> I'm 20 <laughs> years old. What, what's going on? <laughs> so real. And you the clean what? sheet. And the clean yeah, sheet. Exactly. Against Ronaldo. Uh, yes. Ronaldo, oh, hey. Zidane. Uh, <laughs> it's the uh, you know high, what? You high know level. What? My two favorite strikers were on the pitch that night. Henri and Ronaldo. My two favorites growing up. Yeah, see, you played against most was of them. Unreal. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, you might say, past uh, his best time, but uh, you yeah. know, anyone who's played against or with him will tell you he's the, the best striker they've ever seen, best player in, in the world. He could do anything yeah. with the ball at any time. Maybe not that night. Uh, we had him uh, covered, but uh, yeah. but his uh, quality, yeah. Yeah, incredible player, man. Um, wanted to ask you a bit about Arsene Wenger. Um, we don't find out too much about him. He doesn't reveal too much. I mean, um, he had a bit of a difficult time towards the end, but he was, you know, iconic what he did for the club. Um, what was he like to work for um, on a day-to-day -day basis? Look, uh, he gave me my chance, like many of the, the guys in the team, you know. So we, we owned him uh, a lot uh, of respect, first of all. But also he gave us the, the tools to be able to, to, to believe in ourselves and, and to be ourselves on the field and to develop the type of football that we did uh, um, on a weekly basis, on a game, to get, game after game, you know. Um, we believed in that team and we believed that that was the best way to play. To, to win the games, you know, that when you have that belief going into the games, uh, whether you lost the last game or whether things are not going well, uh, you can get up again and, and continue. And he, he transmitted that belief into the players. And for me, it was great for my development and, and brought me to England. So for sure, um, I was, uh, I was uh, thankful to, to him forever. Yeah, of course. F Philippe, how did you adjust to the culture? Because when you're coming from abroad, coming to England, it's, it's kind of a different mm -hmm. culture and different football. How did you feel and how did you adapt? Look, um, all my life, uh, I thought I'm going to come and play in England. This was my my objective, my goal. And um, I was ready at that time to leave, uh, to leave my home because I knew after a while the Swiss League, uh, the country is going to be too small for me. I'm going to have to go. So mentally, I was ready to, to go abroad. Then I arrive in England and you have to be able to speak the language. You have to uh, interact with the guys. At the time, we had uh, uh, Martin Keown, we had uh, uh, Ray Parler, we had still the, the old guard, you know, was mm -hmm. still uh, there. Uh, the core of, of English players was still there. So you knew you had to kind of integrate yourself with them to, to be able to be part of, of the team. Even though we had a lot of uh, uh, players who were from other countries and everything, um, it's nice if you can speak the language and be part of that team. So for me, uh, it was good because I could speak a, a bit of English already. And, uh, and you know, it was pretty smooth for me. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, man. And then obviously, um, Vieira, Henri, all these guys you've played with, uh, what were they like? Were they, were they welcoming when you joined? Uh, was it difficult to adjust? Yeah, that, you know, it took me a bit of time, of course, because, uh, like I said before, the level uh, was so much higher. I come into an unbeaten team, uh, World Cup champions, and I was playing in Switzerland, you know, uh, six months yeah. before. So, for sure, that was a, a big jump, and it took me a bit of time to adjust. But, um, but yeah, they, they were amazing. They were champions, man. Every day in training, uh, Henri wanted to win every single ball, every single game, every single little game that we would do. He was a winner, man. If you if you did a two-touch game with him, he would want to kill you. He, You know, that's how it was. That's his, that's his mentality. Yeah. I'm like, no, yeah. let's, let's warm up a little bit. No, no, no. He wants to win every single ball. And, you know, that mentality, you know, made the player that he was, you know. He wanted to to win at all costs, and and Vieira was the same. Vieira was a was a, a pillar, an important pillar of that that team. Uh, he was a big character in the dressing room. You knew if if he was uh, if he was talking in the dressing room, people were gonna listen. And yeah. um, and on the field, the same. You know, if he took the ball or if he wanted the ball, you have to give him the ball because that's you know it's Patrick. He wants the ball. He wants to dictate the game, and uh, it's important to have uh, guys like him uh, on the field. You want to go to battle with, with people like this. 
Yeah, of course, man. You know, I wanted to ask, um, from when you joined and the likes of Vieira and Omri and those guys were there, did you see a shift in the club? Because obviously towards the time when you left, these guys were leaving and he'd signed Fabregas had come through and they were playing like the Barcelona, uh, like tiki-taka football. Do you think that that was, you know, was was that detrimental to Arsenal? Was that Were they easier to play against towards the end? It's difficult to say, you know, from the time Kevin was playing for Arsenal to the time Arsene was playing and, and then later on, uh, football mm. has changed in England. And if you look at the football today, uh, it's changed massively to the time when I played, you know. So you kind of have to adapt and shift uh, the way you play and the players that you could sign. Um, at, the, at the beginning, when I was there, we could sign players from abroad for a lot of money. And then mm. they, there was a little shift over time where we moved to the new stadium. Maybe there was a little time we couldn't sign players for that much money uh, because we needed to adapt. And, you know, Arsene was doing this and have all the responsibility on his back to, to make this transition in the team, to make this transition uh, on the field and to sign the right players to play the, the football, to be able to compete uh, every single year at the highest level. So, you know, he deserves the greatest amount of respect for, for all those things, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I had to mention as well, Kev, to you, um, obviously, Rocky Rowcastle's birthday, I believe, today. Birthday today, yeah. Uh, obviously, it's, it's, listen, I think we should, it's, it's time we celebrate him now. Uh, yeah. Because I know everybody feels the, the pain of losing somebody like, like Rocky. But I think we're, everyone's getting to the point now, obviously, what's happening in the world, etc. I think it's time to really celebrate Rocky because Rocky wouldn't want everybody down he'd want everybody smiling and happy and to celebrate it and you know yeah. he, he was such a great character such a big character that you know yeah. i'm sure you're going to see a lot of photos going up on twitter and social media of the happier times you know definitely yeah, the definitely. happier times and what was he like as a teammate then was he was he brilliant to be around look when i was coming through rocky and and, and those guys were just starting to make the first team and yeah. He always had time for you. He always would take you under his wing. And, you know, if you needed to ask a question, he was there. You could always go to Rocky. He, you know, and even when I made the first team, he always used to, you know, how you get in there? Are you going to be in Brixton? Because his girlfriend at the time, was, which became his wife, Janet, lived there. So come, I'll give you a lift. You know, you don't need to get the yeah. tube. I said, no, yeah. I'll get the No, come on, I'll take you. So, you know, we just used to, he used to take me around. And, you know, even in 89, he picked me up five o'clock wow. that morning for the Anfield game, you know what I mean? And it, look, wow. I've, I, I, never a bad word to say about that guy. The guy was Mr. Arsenal. He, you, you cut him and he had Arsenal blood. And yeah. uh, what a special, special guy. I just hope that the club do a statue of him because I think it's fitting that he got a statue. Yeah, I hope so, man. Uh, most for I to acknowledge him, man, because he was a legend. I, I only saw... Mostly old footage of him, but everyone, the way you and Ian Wright and people talk about him, he sounds like a real legend of the club, man. South, it was a South London Brazilian. You know, in training, yeah, in training, the manager, George yeah. Graham, had to restrict him to two touch. Wow. Because wow. He, you couldn't get the ball off him. He was that good. He was that skillful. Wow. So everybody yeah. else could play free. He had to play yeah. two touch. <laughs> that, madness, you know? <laughs> that is crazy, bro. What it a was player. Wow. Yeah, man. Phil, I wanted to ask you as well. I saw um, this week, um, Cesc Fabregas, he described you as um, like a brother to him at Arsenal. Um, Fabregas to me was, uh, you know, I thought he was an unbelievable player at Arsenal. One we've never replaced, actually. Uh, maybe Cazorla. Um, but apart from that... Um, you know, what was your relationship like with, with Fabregas? So the, the the month that I arrived, I was put in digs. Um, I thought it's, it's a big move for me. I'm not going to be able to cook and clean and, and do all those things. I thought I'll go in digs for a few months and see how it goes. And uh, and they brought this little Spanish guy um, who came from Barcelona and they said he can't speak a word of, of English. Um, we're going to put him in with you. And I said, OK, let's put him in. And then we started talking and, and you know, it was Sesk. <laughs> so we lived together for about a year. Uh, I yeah. saw him in training a few times. He used to come in uh, 
with the first team, he was 15 years old. And I'll tell wow. you, he was playing one, two around the guys. He was playing one, two touch. It was unbelievable to see. Uh, oh, the, the quality the, that he had, the clarity that he had in his head at that time with his little physique, he was, it was tiny. And uh, yeah. he was playing, you know, so easy, like, uh, like he was playing in the garden with his friends. It was brilliant to see, you know. Uh, he had no fear. Yeah. He just went in and, and, and did, did his job. Um, you could see he, he saw football a little faster than, than anyone, anyone else. And, and that, was, that was brilliant. I, I, was, uh, I was first witness. We have a very good relationship from the start. And I, mm. I did, you know, not take him under my wing, but um, I was with him most of the time because I had to translate, uh, especially outside of the training ground. And, uh, yeah. you know, we keep a, a very good relationship to this day. Yeah, what a player, man. I mean, I remember that game. I went to the game um, at Highbury when you beat uh, Juventus in the Champions League. Mm. And obviously, Vieira was playing for them that night. And Fabregas yeah. just ran rings around him. I couldn't believe it, how good he was. That 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 was a, a special game, I think, for him as well. But for every Arsenal fan, you know, to, to witness that. OK, we've mm -hmm. lost uh, Vieira. Oof. It's a, it's a tough one to replace. But look at, look at this little guy. <laughs> look at this Spanish... Uh, <laughs> Cesc Fabregas running around and, and scoring and with so much personality, you know, that that's what you want uh, when you play for us. We should have had them together, guys. We should have yeah. had them together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, agreed. For sure. Why did Wenger never sign him back, man? He had the, he had the um, buyback clause on him from Barcelona. He refused it, apparently. I don't know. I don't know about these details. You know, it's uh, once once you move on and... I think that's a little bit what what Wenger has done uh, over the years. Uh, once you've moved on, it, it's difficult. You know, you've replaced him with someone else, and you've got a different direction, and that's how it is. Um, I don't know if it's Wenger's decision or how how it went uh, for for Cesc. Um, yeah. I know Cesc uh, feels the the Arsenal colours in his heart uh, from from the start, and it, uh, still to this day, I'm I'm sure he he loves Arsenal and and that's his club. So I don't know. Curtis, I think if you if you if you look between the lines, really, yeah. at yeah. what what happened at Arsenal, it might have been we might have had the buyback option, but I yeah. think it's a financial thing. I think yeah, it's probably. finance mm, that that possibly. cost Arsenal in the end, you know, possibly. So, unfortunately, Arsenal just ain't the club that they were anymore financially, yeah. you know. So, mm. we we miss out again. It's crazy, though, isn't it? We moved to this big stadium to become this financial big club. And, you know, we're, we're penny pinching every season, selling players. Even now, it looks like a Bamiyan, you know, his future's up in the air for the summer. I mean, what do we have to do to move forward and become that top club that we used to be? Do you want to go, Philip? Do you want to go first? It's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> oh, don't difficult. You? Look, uh... <laughs> I, I don't think, uh, I don't, first of all, the, the club is in a very good uh, situation uh, financially, much better than it was uh, a few years back. I think uh, Arsene did this transition. We didn't really notice that much compared to the, the amount of, of money that the, the club spent to, to get that stadium. You know, he, he maintained a, a pretty decent competitive team, um, even though the, the times were, were tough. And I think that's, you know, hats off to, to Arsene and to the players who were there at the time. Um, nowadays, you know, football world goes uh, very fast. A lot of teams that didn't have money back then now have a lot of money to spend. And, uh, you know, the competition is fierce. So, um, yeah, if you want to play a good player who's going to score you a lot of goals, it's going to cost you a lot more money than it did uh, 10 years ago. And, and that, you know, anyone can buy you that player. That's a bit the scary mm -hmm. thing. Uh, back then, only a few teams could, could do that. But nowadays, you know, I don't know, uh, a, a team who just come up can, can spend a, a lot of money on, on a player, you know. So uh, the competition is fierce. That, that's all I can say. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm with Arsenal all the way, so yeah. <laughs> I'll be <defend> that. <laughs> Kurt, Kurt, yeah, yeah. My, my take on it is Go on. Arsenal now have to cut their cloth accordingly. Because okay. especially with what's going on right now, Arsenal weren't in the yeah. greatest shape financially. This is what, third season without Champions League? Can't see us getting yeah. Champions League next season. So what no. we have to do, we have to become a team again. I think that's the key. You know, yeah. looking at 
big money, who we can buy with this. It's not realistic. If Stan Kroenke puts his hands in his pocket, I fair enough, I get that. But what we've got mm. to do, we've got to be a team. We're actually being outshot. Arsenal are being outshone by the likes of Sheffield United. This is not yeah. right. This is yeah. not right. So I believe what we have to do, we have to get a team together, a squad together, and get and get moving, get fighting, get battling, and get winning. We need that winning mentality that Philip said, you know, Vieira and Henri and all the guys, the level was so high that they battled to win. This yeah. is what we need. We need that winning mentality back. No, it's spot on. I mean, it's I so frustrating it, being an Arsenal fan. I mean, every time we get a player that seems to reach that level, we let them go. You know, Alexis Sanchez, now Aubameyang. I mean, when are they going to change the direction of the club? At least hang on to what you've got. I mean, now with the appointment of uh, of Mikel uh, Arteta mm. as a manager and they do as a sporting director, it seems that they have a lot of um, of things uh, in common and that they want to build, um, you know, things properly. And, you know, if they take their time now, they have the time during this uh, virus uh, to, to build things yeah. and to remodel or model the, the squad the way they want to do it. Um, I think the club will go in the right direction. It, it's already uh, going in the right direction in my eye uh, with the, these appointments and uh, and hopefully they can continue uh, taking the, those right decisions. Yeah. Um, some some A question someone wanted to ask um, who they've sent me is, um, who was tougher to play against, Torres or Drogba? They both scored a few goals against me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drogba for his uh, physical presence, I would say he gave yeah. uh, he gave you a game even if he wasn't on his game. You know he would give you a game just because of his presence. I mean he's he's got a huge head on him and uh, and physically, you know, even if his touch wasn't there or whatever, he could he could give you a a, a tough game. You know to play. I think Torres was a little a, a little more. Um, he needed to be in the game to uh, to hurt you and. Uh, yeah, that's my opinion on it, my take on it. Uh, he was on, on his game against us many times, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> top top player, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I noticed as well, you played in um, three World Cups. I mean, not many players can say that. Yeah, I mean, that's another a good moment for me uh, in my career. I, I, I look back on it now. and uh, It's a big pride to have played for my country. Uh, at three World Cups, and you know, to brought the the Swiss uh, flag uh, back up where where it should be, you know, and competing uh, at those big uh, tournaments. Uh, we're a small country, but we develop a lot of uh, good players uh, over the over the years, and they've played a lot of played in the Premier League, and and more are to come for sure. Yeah. Um, last one I wanted to ask you. Um, obviously, being a a former Swiss international, what what. What are the ratings of um, Granit Xhaka over there? I mean, he's had a he's had a tough time at Arsenal. But what what are your thoughts on on him? My personal thoughts: he, he I, I love uh, Granit since he, he made his debut with the national team. I knew him from before in the Swiss league. Uh, he's a very very talented player. I know he's had a a, a tough time in, in England at the beginning, uh, uh, especially before um, uh, Mikel arrived. Um, but you know what? What shows you the strength of, of a man and the strength of a character is how how good you can come back. And we've seen since Mikel's appointment uh, how good he's been and how important people uh, look at the team. And you know, you you wouldn't imagine the team without Granite in uh, at the moment. And you know, it just shows you how how strong he is uh, mentally to have come back. And I'm I'm really happy because I know him since he's a kid, and uh, and I'm really pleased for him, uh, really. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely um, reacted well since Arteta came in um, and obviously had the difficulty with that situation with the fans earlier in the season. But he seems, you know, he seems to have a lot of heart. That's one thing I can't question with Jack. Yeah, a lot of heart, uh, a lot of character. And, and I tell you, he's, he's a quality player. He's got that long ball. He, he can play short uh, passes, um, you know, horizontal and... Uh, most importantly in that position, vertical passes that can break lines. And, and yeah, of course, he will give balls away, but that's what you want him to do. You want him to try those vertical passes to break lines 
and to find the front players. And, you know, he's going to have probably a pass completion a little bit lower than, than another player who just passes the ball horizontally. But, you know, he's going to break those lines and, and, and make space for uh, the other players. And, you know, Arsenal have a lot of quality up front and we need to give them the ball. And if you give them the ball through the lines uh, into space, they will have a lot more chances. So I'm, yeah. I'm pleased to see when he, when he does those things and, uh, and, I, and I know he has the quality to do them. I, th I think Mikel Arteta has been a, a, a real advocate of Granite Xhaka. Obviously, Granite Xhaka was in is in was in kind of limbo, um, you know. Once Unai Emery left, because I think it finished on a bad bad footing. But I think you know Mikel Arteta must take some credit, and uh, you know he's 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 definitely performed under Arteta. Definitely performed under Arteta. So yeah, he probably he, you know simplified his uh, his role, and uh, and I think you know yourself a player. If you know what you're good at and you stick to that and how important you are in that role for the team, uh, it will make you a better player. If you yeah. try to do the job of someone else, then, you know, you kind of lose yourself in, in the game. Uh, he probably simplified his role and, uh, and Granny has felt great and, um, and we've seen it with the performances. So yeah. I'm, I'm really pleased. So moving forward, um, finally, moving forward, what, what do you think is the best that that Arsenal can hope for and what do you think they need to do to to become, you know, at least get back in the Champions League? Yeah. Go on, Philip. David. Go on, <laughs> go on. I like your answers. You set me up nice. <laughs> right, okay. Now, listen, uh, stick to, to the people that are, are taking the decisions now. So, uh, having a doing place and having Mikel Arteta in with a real philosophy, a real way of, of playing. They, they know what they want to do. Uh, I think we need to give them time. Uh, we've seen it with the previous managers. If you don't give them time and the possibility to work um, uh, with, with getting, you know, in regards to getting the players that they want and, and keeping the ones that they have, um, if you can do that and give them time, I'm, I'm sure Arsenal, you know, will, will come back uh, the way we all want to, say, to see them. Um, it's the team of all of us. We need to continue uh, supporting them. And, uh, yeah, we can have a say. Yeah, we can have, a, you know, a shout every now and then. It's normal and it's part of football. We, we do need to be uh, uh, critics. Uh, but I think, you know, to support the players and to be uh, positive and to see what they're trying to do um, and to support that, I think that's, uh, what, that's our role as, as fans as well. And just to follow on from uh, Philippe, which made really good points. I think the key for Arsenal is to get hungry players. Mm. Hungry players. Players who actually are up for the fight. Like we mentioned before, when you when you play for Arsenal, everybody, you get the best of everybody. Yeah. So if the players are not up for it, if the players, you can't take a day off, you can't take a game off at Arsenal, it, it doesn't work that way. So we need hungry no. players. That's for one. For two... We've got a good crop of young players coming through who we need to get more minutes to and we need to get them up to speed and get them consistent. Yeah. That is one of the most important things that Mikel Arteta is going to do as Arsenal coach manager because he will save us a fortune in the transfer market with the likes of Saka, Nelson, Alt Smith Rowe, you know, all, all these players who are coming through Eddie and Ketch, you know, all of these players, they can save us a fortune. But mm. they have to be developed. Now, if, if they have to leave the club to go on loan to come back, so be it. But, you know, that's what he has to do. He, there is talent there, but he's got to nurture it and get it through at the right time. And he also has to bring in players who can help. Philip mentioned, you know, when Fabregas came to the club, he, he was on the uh, Philip's wing. You need, yeah, yeah. Play, you need experienced players like that who are going to help nurture these young players. I think David Luiz is that type of guy. He's like helping the youngsters. You do need senior players who will help these young players. Yeah. Yeah, no, spot on. Um, I'm just going to finish off with a few questions what people have been um, sending. LG92 said, what player would each of you want to play at Arsenal? Like a realistic signing in the summer. I'd, I'd, well, I'd like to see. I, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go the opposite end. Of, I'm going to go your position, okay, um, Philip. 
I would like to see. Uh, I would like to see a left-footed centre back, of Mancano yeah. or Koulibaly, somebody who you can you can play high, and you won't get you won't get done on a ball over the top. Someone who's got yeah. legs, who's got physicality, somebody like that. That's what I'd like to see because I think Arsenal can play, and we've seen under Arteta, Arsenal can play well, but when they get undone, it's by quick forwards. So yeah. you need you need centre backs who can actually cover these quicker forwards. That's that's my one. Yeah, Philip. Yeah, I mean I agree with uh, Kev. You know, left footed centre back is is very high on everyone's radar. I think uh, in in mm -hmm. modern football, uh, you want a centre back that can play out from the back um, with his left foot and, and find the spaces, and at the same time that can play a high line and is adapted to uh, to England and to Arsenal's uh, type of uh, game. Uh, so left-footed centre-back has been uh, has been something that in the last few years uh, Arsenal have been looking for, for sure. But in the market, you know, the, they're very high on, on everyone's list. So you have Upamecano, you have Umtiti, you have uh, Koulibaly, uh, three type of players that, that could suit uh, this type of football. So uh, why not? Um, I think uh, I, I wouldn't speculate too much uh, now that that I have no, not played. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you love to do that. I leave it to you. But uh, you know, uh -huh. keeping uh, keeping a good core of players and holding on mm -hmm. with them and believing in them. I think uh, sometimes, uh, as opposed to going and looking for for something else every single time, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like Kevin said, you know, sticking to to a few of the players and building around them. I think that's uh, something that Arsenal need to do. Curtis, yeah. I've got another one. Go we, on. We, 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 we've needed that midfield shield. Yeah. Granite Xhaka is not a holding midfielder. No. We, we, we know that. Torreira is, was supposed to be that holding midfielder. But mm. I don't know what's going on, whether he's fancied, whether he's not, whether he's happy in England. Uh, yeah. Thomas Partey, I've watched him all season. Yeah. He is the type of player who would slot in at Arsenal and will be a fan favourite. Because he's yeah, tough, he's rugged, he'll break things up, he's aggressive. You know, everything we miss, that's what he is. And he protects... Yeah. You asked Philip about a, a, a midfielder who protects the centre-halves. Worth their mm. weight in gold. Yeah. It makes course. your job so much easier. <laughs> that's for sure. You played, with, you played with Gattuso, didn't you, at Milan and Vieira at Arsenal? Yeah. You had good <laughs> yeah. protection there, bro. Yeah, um, no, so, for sure. Um, Leah says, um, Philly, the best away ground you've played at and the worst. The worst? Uh, the best I will go for uh, Bernabeu because it's Bernabeu. It's, it's uh, a temple and an amazing place to play. Um, and the worst, it's, it's tough. I've played so, to some uh, worse, uh, bad, bad stadiums, but... Uh, yeah, probably some of them in in Switzerland. You know, the ones on a, on a plastic pitch. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna say that because I'm gonna go back and live in Switzerland. I'm gonna throw stuff. At them, but <laughs> there's some pretty bad uh, plastic pitches there. And, uh, yeah, I didn't enjoy them for sure. Um, Jib said, uh, "Who's the best player you played with, Philly?" Uh, yeah, there's uh, many people ask me this. Uh, I'd say Pirlo. I uh, played with Pirlo yeah. in my year at Milan. It was unreal, the things he would do. Uh, right foot, left foot. You could ping the ball 50 meters uh, on, on someone's foot. Uh, he could, you know, even under pressure, he could get out of it with a little spin going very slowly. But, you know, you couldn't get the ball off him. And he always wanted the ball, you know. It yeah. was an amazing, amazing player. I don't have to tell you who Pirlo is. So yeah, <laughs> you know player. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Great player. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um, really appreciate you two coming on. Two great guests. Um, pleasure to talk to you, Phil, um, at the last minute thank as you. well. So thank you for responding. And Kev, never let me down, Kev. I appreciate it as well, man. Um, what, what are you up to as well? What are you two doing um, during lockdown? Are you working still? Philippe, go on. Philippe, you say you're... Yep. Uh... Yeah, yeah. So... Um... I'm um, I'm preparing, you know, my coaching badges. So I'm I'm learning a little bit about coaching. I'm watching quite a lot of uh, video, 
and uh, I'm doing a sporting director course with the Spanish Federation. So I'm I'm developing that side of uh, of the game as well. You know, so I have a full picture of of everything of every uh, decision that uh, are, are being taken at at football clubs. So that's a little bit what I'm doing and keeping my um, my uh, contacts alive as well. Making sure I'm I'm contacting people and making sure I'm staying in the game because that's what uh, you know that's where the passion is. So yeah, yeah. Now, I'm sure you'll be a great coach. Um, Kev, just this question finally. Zane says, Kevin, which team do you think Sancho will join and do you think Aubameyang will leave? A good question, uh, Zane. Um, Sancho, obviously, he's, he left England and went to, to British Dortmund and uh, he's had a fantastic time there he, within, what, is it two years? He's yeah. a full, inter full England international this season already and we're not even at the end, obviously. He's got double figures in goals and double figures in assists. Obviously, the big the big boys are going to be clamouring for him. I'm not sure mm -hmm. which team. I, I'm sure he'll want to come back to England. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not so I've not spoken or, or contacted his dad in a little while. Um, yeah, and and it wouldn't it wouldn't be right of me to be even if I did and he told me to be sharing it like this. But I yeah, think he yeah. will. I do think he will come back to England. But yeah. which team? I mean, you're talking about the likes of Liverpool and Man United battling for him. He's already yeah. been at Manchester City, so I can't see him going back there. No. Um, Arsenal couldn't afford him um, no. for transfer fees. So, and maybe Chelsea. I think those are the three in England really who could afford him. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I'm, I'm not really sure which team. But it's going to be one of the big boys, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and, and and will I will all believe. I think Mikel Arteta has a has a charm offensive to do if he's going to stay. I really yeah. do. Because, look, Arsenal, uh, they're not looking great for a Champions League spot. Aubameyang's, no. what, 31? So, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm not saying he's he's old, but he, he's get the window of achieving stuff in, in Europe. He's closing. Yeah. So, you, you know, if you think about it, if, if he left Arsenal and went somewhere else, it's going to take him maybe a year to adjust. And then he's going to look to kick on. A charm offensive by Mikel Arteta is to keep him and say, look, we're going to be competitive next season. We're going to make it next season. That's the only thing he can do. But if I was a Bamiang, I'd stay. Because of course. <laughs> being, the, being the top man somewhere means something at a club like Arsenal. Yeah. But look, the ambition of Aubameyang, you know, sometimes we see we see players stay. I'd like to think Aubameyang has got that relationship with Arsenal. He's captain now. I'd like to think mm. he would stay at the football club and uh, and take his rightful place at, as one of the top guys ever to play, ever to score goals for Arsenal. That's what I'd like to see. But what he's probably thinking is, you know, he had a dream of playing for Real Madrid when he was young, I believe. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to be interested in him because somebody who scores the types of goals he scores would really get make a difference for Real Madrid in La Liga and in Europe. So, you know, it's going to be a difficult one to keep him. Yeah, let's hope we can hang on to him, man, because I'm, I'm fearful if he goes, man, it could be difficult. It will be. It will be. Um, as I say, thank you to you both for joining me on the show. Hopefully get you both on again. And um, take care during this difficult time. Big up everyone in the chat. Sorry, I didn't read all your comments. First time doing this with all the comments on, man. It's, they it's got hard, quick, man. It's I don't hard. know how Robbie does it, man. You listen, you got to uh, pick. You got to pick. You pick and choose. Pick and choose. Pick and choose. Pick and yeah, choose. Philip, um, nice yeah, one. Good to see you, Philip. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks very much take for care. having me. Curtis, on show. really nice. Curtis, take, anytime. Thanks, anytime. Anytime. Take care, bro. Thanks very much. See ya. Stay in touch. Bye-bye.